Well, here we have another uh, headline from the kind of one of the woke capital of the world. And is anybody surprised? Portland Police Riot Squad resigns following indictment of officer. I'm Grid7, both on YouTube and on Rumble. Join me there, better place. And we'll get into this, what's going on in Portland here. The rapid response team voted unanimously to resign on Wednesday following the criminal indictment of an officer for assault stemming from a riot in 2020 in August. The rapid response team, a unit within the police, Portland Police Department, voted unanimously to resign on Wednesday during a meeting with the police union. This follows the criminal indictment of an officer for assault stemming from a riot in August 2020. Sources within the police bureau told the Post Millennial. <clears throat> going to get into a little bit more of this, but uh, it just doesn't sound like the officials in Portland have the police back. They're, they're supporting the criminals, the people who are burning everything, and just really being not for the people either. Now, they really want the average citizen to, uh, to suffer. Well, Officer Corey Budworth was on the rap response team. A group of police officers that a group of police officers that volunteered for the post and are deployed to respond to riots, civil unrest, and demonstrations in Portland. But Worth was in Budworth was indicted and charged with one count of fourth degree assault, a misdemeanor by Malinameth, the district attorney Mike Schmidt's office on Tuesday. I'm gonna get a little bit more of this. So on the night of August 18, 2020, Antifa militants threw a mo Molotov cocktail into the Sheriff's County headquarters as the team struggled to contain the, the riot. In a statement released after the indictment, Schmidt said, In this case, we allege that no legal justification existed for Officer Budworth's deployment of force and that the deployment of force was legally excessive under the circumstances. They're throwing Molotov cocktails and burning shit and doing all this type of stuff. At what point does deployment of force become... No, I, I would love to know from Schmidt's perspective, at what point does it become legal you know, how far when it's at, when, when they're at his home is that what it is I'm sure he wouldn't have a problem if they were doing it at his home or neighborhood but if it's not at his neighborhood he's supporting the protesters my office will continue to do everything we can to ensure justice is done without error or delay and we make sure our work and policies are rooted in fairness and equality. Well, there was a few activist photographer and writer Terry Jacobs with a baton. A video post show, post to show social media show him hitting Jacobs in the head from behind. And then again, as she falls to the ground, well, they got to hype it up here a little bit. And no, he maybe did use maybe a little bit excessive. But I don't know what else happened. He goes, unfortunately, this decorated public servant has been caught in the crossfire of agenda-driven city leaders and a politicized criminal justice system. The police union wrote in a statement describing Jacobs as a criminal rioter. Uh, the indictment is a blatant attempt to hold police accountable, a source from within the police, the Portland Police Bureau told the Post Millennial, stating that no victim came forward. Instead, they claimed that an attorney saw the video and approached Jess Jacobs about pressing charges against the officer. So what typically happens is the riot team gets called out to be prepared for a huge protest. Then the patrol officers from all three precincts are in standby, which gets activated when the protest starts. This means all patrol calls go to priority calls only, basically only active assaults, shooting in persons, Person crimes only get responded to. All other calls, calls hold indefinitely until the protest is over or the next day. Now that the riot team is no more, we have no clue what's going to happen. We don't have enough patrol officers to be pulled from the huge, from the road to handle huge crowds. Yeah, this is going to be a, a huge, you know, 
a problem for the citizens, and the citizens are going to go for, to the officials, and the officials are going to have no freaking clue what happened, because they're, they're going to be, and to them, it's going to be blindsided, because they do have tunnel vision on this one. They are so in lockstep with the far left that they have no fucking clue what's going on. Now, Portland Police Officer Executive Daryl Turner expressed concerns to the Lars Larson show on Wednesday after the indictment, fearing officers would quit after the Tuesday prosecution, in which they were it's described as a witch hunt, which it is. I'm sorry you leftists out there. If you're listening, you're fucking morons. You're not liberal. You're leftist. You're, you're not helping this country with this shit, really. No. And this, this is the kicker right here. In October, Mike Schmidt rejected over 540 riot-related cases in interest of justice. What happened to being fair? Where was that? Up here somewhere. To make sure our work and practice are rooted in fairness and equality. No. You're, it's all political. It's all frickin' political, and you know it. Now, they've also implemented catch and release policies for accused criminals and rioters. And you wonder why the police are fed up with people like you. And this guy's going to have no clue what happened when everything starts going to shit. The public is not going to know what happened because they're trusting these officials. They vote. They keep voting for these damn officials because they're so butt-blinded by the media. Now, what do you think? Portland in trouble? Are the citizens going to have a problem? Let me know what you think. And I'll see you next video.